Okay, hello, I'm Javier Gómez. Uh, <laughs> hi. Um, um, I'm a I'm member of the PLT, I didn't say that before. Uh, this is my third time doing this speech and I'm improving every time I'm doing one and again. Um, I'm part of the Red Component team uh, with Bojan and I'm going to ask you something. Uh, why we need testing? What is testing about? So does anyone of, uh, in the room can say uh, why we need testing? Why? To ensure that the final product delivers the requirements set out in the scope of the project. OK. So I should repeat that for the video, but basically for quality, you know? Um, uh, <laughs> OK. Yeah, we need, we need our software working free of bugs. Uh, that means that we have quality in us, our software. And uh, this is why we do testing. But how we can do testing? Does any one of you have any idea of how can we, the, the most easy way of doing testing? Oh, yeah, what? Trying, yeah. You can finish your website and catch your mom. Mom, can you sit here and you know test my website? And you can see if it's working and she finds the things that she wants to find. So that means that you are testing your website. But we have many ways of testing uh, the tools or the software that we are doing. And we are going to speak specifically about unit testing. That is one of that ways. Uh, but why? Why we need uh, to use uh, unit testing or why we need to use testing in the Joomla project? Basically because we have a challenge. This is some of the people that has contributed code to the Joomla project. But the list is like, you know, going like that and down and it is increasing day after day. So we are, ha we are having more and more contributors to the Joomla project. What happens when you you are the only developer in a software. That if you do something wrong um, and you create a bug, you more or less will know what you did and you will know how to solve, more or less. But what happens if we have thousands of developers contributing code? What happens if I'm fixing a uh, multi-language in Joomla, but wh while I'm doing that, I'm you know, destroying the database part of the CMS. We cannot allow that. And we need something that can help us the, to automatically protect the software that we are doing. And this is working for uh, people working alone, but also for big projects like the one that we have now. So I'm going to show you an example. I'm, I'm not going to go in deep, but basically, we have here Michael Babker contributing something to the Joomla project. And we have a bot. Well, we used to have a bot, but uh, um, I, I don't know. It was for the end of the year party. The bot went out and drank a lot of beers, and we don't have Joomla Jenkins anymore. So Joomla Jenkins is testing what Michael uh, contributed and says, unit test complete. There were zero failures and zero errors from uh, 1,707 tests and well, blah, 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 blah. So we have a way to automatically change, uh, check that this contribution, contribution is not breaking any of the areas in the project. So that has a lot of sense. And we are doing that with unit testing. What's unit testing? We have many ways of test software. As I said, we can put user in front of the software. Oleg uh, already said, mentioned many ways of testing. And unit testing is testing small units of code, doing testing small parts of the system. But I'm going to show you an example of what is that. But basically, the goal that we want to achieve, and we will go back to that slide later, is to have the 100% of our code tested. That means that every time someone put a contribution to the Joomla project, we are 
checking that everything in the CMS is still working after this contribution. So the, the thing that you can see here is the amount of tests that we have in the Joomla code. Uh, well, more or less, yeah. And, uh, and we need all these bars green, in green. So that's the challenge. Um, so let's see, let's do a test. So we are going to code a calculator, a calculator machine, this calculator that you have in your desktop uh, and the desk, and, and you calculate and use some things, you, uh, you do addition, multiplication, division. So what we have here, let me zoom that, we have a class that is called calculator. You can see that from, okay. So we have a function that it's called sum. And we have two parameters, a, b. So it's going to sum a and b here. And the result is going to be returned by this function. So easy. You don't need to know about PHP to know what it's doing. Uh, but if you have any question, please go ahead. And we have another file called calculator test that is going to be the class that tests this feature that I develop. So basically what I'm doing is I'm requiring this calculator PHP file. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. So what I'm doing here is requiring the other file. So I have the calculator PHP file and the calculator test file. And from the calculator test file, I'm requiring the calculator. That is the file that I'm going to test. I'm going back to the calculator. The calculator was the one that has this function of sum. OK, I'm in the test. Here is the class calculator test that tests the class calculator and extends from PHP unit framework test case. Uh, we don't need to worry now about that. It's just something that we will need to, ha to know when you will be super skilled unit testers, but not now. Okay, so what we, what we are doing in the calculator test class is especially, I want to show you this method here. Um, this method says, it's called test 3 plus 2 returns 5. So I'm going to test if 3 plus 2 is returning 5. That means that my sum, my addition function works. So I'm going, I'm going to do a test that says assert equal. Uh, I, I'm not really good in English. Uh, can, well, for you, assert uh, has sense. I mean, I, I assert. Uh, how, how? I climb, OK. So I assert, I climb that uh, 3 plus 2 is going to return 5. So I'm making sure that this function works. Let me show you how this happens. I'm going to go to my terminal. And I'm going to do, you will have this code later if you want to check later. OK, I'm going to use that command that I put in a comment, so you can later check it in your computer. PHP unit, and I'm going to put the test, the class, the file, that is going to be testing the other file. <clears throat> so I'm now in terminal, and I'm saying PHP unit. So calculator test. So once I... Uh, probably, yeah. That's a good idea for the next uh, speech. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably, yeah, I can add that to PHP Storm. Well, anyway, uh, I'm running that PHP unit and it is saying, hey, I'm PHP unit. I was done by this uh, guy, Sebastian Berman. And I'm testing one test uh, with one assertion, and it worked. 
So that means that I send 3 plus 2, and it returns 5. Let me modify the calculator function. So instead of uh, doing plus, imagine that we are in the Joomla project, and some other person comes and says, why are you using A, B? You may, maybe you can call that uh, operation, operator 1 and operator 2. But let's, let's say that that person forgot to change the variable, so this function is not going to work. Let me try the test to test it again. So I have a failure, and it says, calculator test. The test 3 plus 2 returns 5 is failing, and uh, we are expecting 3 plus 2 uh, must return 5, but it's returning something that it's not 5. So there was a failure. So imagine if I do a lot of tests in Joomla like that, and somebody comes and you know broke my, my software. I'm 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 going to be sure that he's not breaking or she's not breaking anything. Let me do more tests so everyone here has a clear picture. So I'm going to put back the code A and B. <clears throat> and let's do another test here. So I'm going to do this public function uh, test. How much do you want to test uh, you, for example? Uh, what numbers do you want to sum to? Uh, five and twelve. Five. Okay, let's test five uh, plus. Twelve returns what? Seventeen. Returns seventeen. And I'm going to put the method this assert equals. PHP unit offers a lot of functions. Not only assert equals, but I can assert true. I I, I can assert that is false. So assert equals, uh, we said that uh, first we need to put the, the value that we think that it's going to be returned. So in this case it's 17. And I'm going to call the method uh, cal of calculator. So this calculator, I want to zoom. And the numbers that I want to zoom are uh, 5 and 12. So I can add a message here. It's going to be uh, 5 plus uh, 17. 12. Uh, so 12, thank you, must return um, 17. So, I think I have finished my method. I have some warnings here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do the test again. So, this time I have had two tests, and I have two tests, two assertions, everything okay? Good. Let's improve our calculator. Uh, let's add a new method that it's called. Well, before doing that, I'm going to show you something very cool. Uh, it's not really cool because I'm using a PHP unit version from a year ago, maybe. So it's not so cool now. It, it, it could be cooler. But I have a, uh, a thing that is called coverage. That is a command that you can use. That is, uh, well, let me do it. PHP unit. I want it with colors, uh, coverage, HTML, um, in the folder, store that in the folder, coverage, and calculator, test.php. 
what this command is going to do is going to create a folder called uh, coverage and let me open a browser and let's go to see what I have gotten from this so it's oh I need my local server oh no Okay, here we are. What I have gotten from the execution of this common is a website that actually says the amount of testing done to my code. So he sa he's saying, uh, I have uh, information of the calculator class, and the calculator class has a method called sum and a method called mi minus. The minus is still, we haven't gone there. But the method sum is it has 100% of coverage. The test is testing all the sum method. Let me show you the downside of this website. The coverage is saying, this guy has test these lines of the method. Since those are the two lines that the method has, the, the class is tested the 100%. And since I have not tested the, the function minus, so he's saying that uh, I still need to test this area. So are you slipping or you're getting the idea? Or both? OK. <laughs> let's, let's create that minus method and let's test it. So I'm going to go to calculator PHP back. And uh, this method is going to be C is equal to A minus B. And I'm going to return C. So uh, I'm going to do the coverage again. Let's see what happens. I'm going to refresh the page. And here is saying you have tested this, but you still have these lines that are not tested, right? Okay, so let's test that. And I'm going back to calculator test, uh, and I'm going to create a new method. It's public function. Um, who wants to give me the numbers this time? You, for example? Well, oh, something difficult, 7 minus 7. Okay. That's risky. <laughs> 7 minus 7 returns 0. <laughs> Sorry? Hmm. Uh. That's that's the risky part of all. Oh. Okay, let's let's try. These assert. Well, let's let's try that. Why won't we assert false? I haven't prepared that, so yeah, I'm a crazy guy. But let's see. I'm going to try this method that instead of saying assert equals, is saying assert false. Uh, some of you might know that zero in PHP is the same as false. So assert uh, false that we, I, I need the, the condition now. Oh. Condition. So, well, I'm going to do back. Yeah, we can do that later in the bug squad session. Assert equals uh, zero, comma, this, 
cal calculator. This time, instead of sum, we are going to test the minus method, right? Minus, and we are going to say 7, 7. And I'm going to put the message that it's 7 minus 7 equals 0. OK. Let's cross fingers and oh, thank you. I did it in purpose because I wanted to show you how testing works. OK, uh, I'm going to test it. And we have now these uh, three points. Uh, unit testing shows uh, every test in points. If you have 1,000 of tests, you will see this screen like going dot, 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 dot. It's really cool. <laughs> and so we have three tests that work it. OK. so. Now that you know how unit testing works, let's play a game. Let's play a game with TDD. Uh, anyone in this room knows what's TDD? Now you know. Uh, what's TDD? Test -driven development. OK, test driven development. What we are going to do is to change the way uh, the developers are used to solve things. Well, there's a principle in development that says that if you have a big problem, you need to split it in small problem and tackle one after the other. So the test-driven development is a cool idea that helps, helps you to break big problems in small pieces. And I'm going to show you that, <coughs> playing that game, that's called FizzBuzz. Does anyone in this room has played this Fizz Bus game? No? It's a game for children. So uh, it is a group word game for children to teach them about division. Players take turns to count incrementally, replacing any number divisible by 3 with the word Fizz, and any number divisible by 5 with the word Bus. So the idea is. Uh, I'm going to say 1, and you are expected to say the, uh, the number uh, back. So if I say 1, you say 1. If I say 2, you say 2. And if I say 3, you say fizz, because it's multiple, uh, it's divisible by 3. And le let's go to try to play that game. Uh, OK, 1, no, 1, 2, 3. OK, four, four. five, four. bus. OK, good, good, six. Oh, sorry. Uh, OK, fish, OK, fish. And uh, seven? Good. Uh, over there, eight, beat? Good. Nine? Good. 10? 10, boss. Good. 11? 12? Oh, good. <laughs> 13? And 14? 15? Fizz bus. Good. So, OK, we can continue like that. But let's put it that in a program. So the, the thing that we're going to do is write the algorithm behind that, that uh, game. And you can think, oh, um, if you need to create this algorithm like that, it's hard. It's not easy. But if we have test-driven development idea behind that, you will see that it's going to be much more easy. So. I have created uh, a fizz bus class instead of the calculator. We have here uh, the fizz bus class that uh, is a, this function returns a number or fizz or bus depending blah 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 blah. You all know how to play. And I have a, p a public method. Uh, we had before that sum and minus. This time we are going to have a method that is called run. And it's going to do all everything. I just need to give him a number. So I'm going to give one. And this method is expected to answer me one. 
No? The test driven development uh, works like that. I have this test class that is going to test my FISBUS algorithm. But the, the test driven development uh, asks you, as Oleg said in his session, uh, to start doing first the test instead of doing the software first. Okay? So we have already one test ready that is test one. Let me show it to you in a bigger screen. Okay, we have this test that says test one returns one. And we have this assert equals, uh, we are expecting one. And we are testing the method, this FISBUS method run with one. And the message is one returns one. So I'm going to run PHP unit to see if this works. PHP unit. Uh, fees bus test. Okay. PHP unit fails. There was one fail. Test one returns one is not working. Uh, uh, you fail it asserting that nulls matches expected one. So my function has returned null, obviously, because there's nothing here. So I'm expecting now to return one. So I'm going to start developing my function. If, I, if I'm expecting this function to return one, what's the easiest way to do it? Return one for return. Thank you. So return one. OK, I'm going to test it and work it. OK, next step, I'm going to write my second test, because remember that Test-driven development says that you must first write the test and then write the code. OK, public, function, test. What's the next step? Two. So test two returns good. Two. So this. Assert equals to this fees bus run and the text is two returns two. Okay, so the next step is testing again. I'm testing. And I have a failure, of course, because my function is not ready to return to. Let's move back. So what can I do in this code to return 1 when I'm asking for 1 and to return 2 when I'm asking for 2? Does anyone have a simple idea to make it happen? Return number. Oh, return number. I think you, you are thinking, you know, bigger. <laughs> because what if I do if... Uh, number is equal to 2, return 2, and if not, return 1, okay? S simpler? No, you like your solution. Who prefers that solution? Thank you. <laughs> okay. The second beer today. <laughs> okay, let's go to test it. Work it. Good. So let's move to the next step. We who knows who's the next step? Who's the next step? Exactly. So the next step is this test public function test. Uh, Three returns three. No fees. Three returns fees. Okay. This assert equals three. This what? Ah, uh, real. Re uh, cool, cool. I owe you a beer. Fees. 
this is really expensive to do <laughs> to attend this. Uh, Fist boss three, okay. Wrong what? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, too much beer yesterday. <laughs> uh, maybe three returns fifth. Okay, now I think there's something wrong here. Uh, space before closing parentheses. Yeah. What? Return? Ah, thank you. Return. Returns. Okay. 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 So we have the test. Let's try. And he says, failure. Um, failure asserting that one match it expected fees. Okay, back to the code. How can I improve my class in order to return fees? Options, ideas, what? If the number returns, uh, if the number equals three, returns fees. Okay, dollar number equal three. Well, in PHP, it works anyway. Yeah. Fishing guys. <laughs> Return fees. OK. So I'm going to test it, work it. The thing is that you, you, you still don't know the coolest thing of what we are doing. But now you're going to know it when we reach the five. Um, let's, let's move to, uh, instead of going to the three, I to the four, let, let's move to the five. So five must return what? Bus. Bus. Okay. So test five returns bus this as equals this five five returns bus I think it's okay let's test it failure then I'm going to my class ideas for returning bus here Okay. If number is equal to five, return bus. So I'm testing, work it. The thing is, uh, the test driven development says that uh, you test, you failure, you write the feature, it works, and then you have um, a moment where in, when you can look at the code and identify code that is repeating. Maybe you can save uh, code lines if at this point of the development you can uh, rearrange things. I don't know the name in English of... Uh, refactor. refactor, yeah. <laughs> okay, so does anyone in this room think that there is any way to improve this code? What? No? Eh? <laughs> no? Ma maybe no. Maybe no. Let's, let's do another test. And maybe we, we can think on a solution. <laughs> Sorry? We we'll fail. Oh, let, let, let's try. Let's try. So I'm going to copy that method to be faster. Ted, test four returns what what four returns four so assert equal that four if I in input four four
4 returns 4. And I'm going to test it. It's going to fail. Uh, fail it, asserting that 1 matches expected 4. So I was expecting 4, and my code is returning 1. OK, so I'm going to do that if the number is equal to 4, return 4. But I need to rearrange things. It, this is so crazy. And you had a very good idea at the very beginning, because you are a skilled developer. Uh, but why don't we do just this return number? OK, so the idea is. <coughs> If I get a 3, I'm going to return fees. If I get a 5, I'm going to return bus. But if I don't get non-3 or neither 5, I'm going to return number. So I think that this is going to make 4 work. Let me test. Yeah, it worked. It, it works. OK. I can the, I'm expected to continue doing it like that until 100. But I don't, I'm not sure we have time for that. So let's let's try the 15 no the 9 for example 9 at uh, 6 6 is a good number okay public function test 6 returns what fees so Six, six returns fees. Yes. Okay. Ready. Testing. One failure. File it. Asserting that six match expected fees. So that means that my class is returning six instead of fees because I'm sending a six, a six, and it's not a three, it's not a five, so I'm returning number. Okay. How can I do that now? Does anyone here has any idea? Okay. Is this what you mean? Yeah. No. No. What? Okay, so let's. Why? Wow. You are breaking a principle of the test driven development, so you owe me a beer now. We are, we are in peace. Uh, I, I think we are running out of time, or. It's until. Okay, okay. So let's try it. And you did it well. So uh, you have homework. For after this session, you are expected to do testing until the 100. And really, uh, this is a, a, in English, is katas, yeah? Uh, code katas. So you can, you can teach yourself a lot uh, using this, this kind of games. And this is really cool because, OK, here we, we, are, we are reaching a, um, very simple exercise, but there are many katas. If you search for PHP katas, you, you can find a lot of examples, and you can try the unit testing, uh, uh, the test-driven development idea uh, with those exercises. It's a lot of fun. You are not going to want to get out on weekends. You are going to stay at home just <laughs> testing. And Let's going to do a code coverage. Um, Instead of testing the calculator, I'm going to test the fees bus.
Uh, okay, I have the feeds bus, and it's saying that I, I have all my class tested. Um, well, one cool thing about test driven development is that what we have created is actually something really cool. Uh, so with test driven development we have learned we have learned to be better developers. Uh, we are making sure that our code works and we are doing something really nice that it's we are documenting uh, at some point what the application has to do ha, uh, is expected to do. So at this point I can give to some person this file the, the fees bus test instead of the fees bus class and this person is going to be maybe able to figure out what the, the, the application expected to do, isn't it? So I can go through all these steps and guess um, what this software does. So this is one of the big uh, nice things of the testing and we have a lot of good uh, things coming from from working with this approach but still unit testing is not easy. Uh, we haven't, we, this is just a, a small simple class of what you can do with unit testing but to really work with unit testing you need to uh, write code thinking uh, in order to be tested. It's true that the current Joomla CMS is not easy to to test. We need to we need to rewrite rewrite a lot of things in order to be uh, able to be easy testable. Uh, anyway, this is all what I wanted to show it to you today. Um, thank you very much for attending this session and if you want I can upload this code to github and I can share the repository and you can contact me there and ask me some questions but yeah I'm not I'm not super skilled in unit testing so maybe Oleg can help you better <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you very much that's all No. <laughs> if they are easy, yeah, but. I really think that Ole can answer better than me that question, <laughs> but. It I, will, it I, This is maybe more expensive way of developing, de developing, but you are saving a lot of time maintaining a software, isn't it? And and you are making sure that you you are free of bugs. So that's also having a good co quality. Obviously, it takes more time, like using Git instead of a, an FTP shared uh, folder in between all developers, but. At some point, somebody's going to break everything and you're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah, but obviously, you won't, you won't use that for simple things. So maybe you, you will use it. I know what you mean. You are not expected to test Joomla with unit testing at some point. You, are maybe, uh, want, you, you maybe want to test uh, the Joomla framework with unit testing. And probably for, for testing Joomla, you have better uh, things like Selenium or you have many tools for testing and you need to think which is the best uh, testing tool for the thing that you want to test. For example, if you want to test JavaScript, it doesn't have sense to, to use PHP unit. Or, so still, yeah, this is just a small part of testing. Is TPD uh, uh, incorporated in your uh, coding attitude now? 
I'm, you I'm, I'm a very good developer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it's a completely different approach from. It's a different. Sure, yeah. It's depending what you're writing. You. Uh, yeah. It's very useful when you, when you have like recursive methods or that kind of complicated situation in which you have to, to abstract before and say. Uh, in this case, I have to do this and that, but in the second case, in that case, test-driven development is much easier because you don't have to think before all the cases. You, j you just know you have three possible results and you back to it. If you are writing uh, Joomla controller or model or whatever, it, it doesn't have sense. I mean, I want a list of, cont of articles. Um, I'm writing a view doesn't have sense to do unit testing but you need to do an algorithm or something that is really complicated this is helping you to break in pieces all the big problem and it's easy way to to solve it yep. so any any other easy question <laughs> Sorry. no Yeah, but uh, you know, yeah, I, know. I, I need to drink beer, and you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. The the idea is that you continue and. Uh, do you want to come here and do the test for fifteen? Let's let's say the other way. If you program uh, this uh, not using unit testing a TDD idea, you are not covering all possibilities neither. So you you are still you are covering some of the possible problems that you can have. But yeah, the the idea is that you test all the cases that you can have. I think it's a lot of investing for um, defending yourself from uh, creating bugs later on. Changes. Yeah. And as long as the job fails, then no problem. And you'll see, okay, now I did something that made a piece of my code that I made in the beginning, which was correct, make it fail now. So I broke it. It, it might be appropriate in regard that, that scenario you just mentioned. It might be reasonable to argue if you are the only person developing a piece of software. But in the project I'm involved with, When a new release of that software is is uh, introduced, the risk of introducing regression errors, where you somehow or other manage to go back to something that was about four versions before it, and someone forgot to pull it all together in GitHub and and push it out, and it never got tested at the appropriate level. You have a list of all of the possible tests. Given a hundred thousand lines of code, you don't know how many Factors are in there, but you multiply that out, you, you got an almost infinite number of combinations of all these condition statements. It, it's, it's not possible to test everything, but at least it gives you some, uh, some confidence. <laughs> yeah. And, and what the confidence is, I mean, you might say it gives you a 50% confidence level, and 50% is better than Just ask I don't know what. How many failure in unit testing there is when you merge on a Joomla platform? <laughs> That's saving time, reversing. Well, at, for for the person that is here, uh, you know, in, in GitHub and need to push the merge button, or for that person having this message here that you know you have the confidence that this is not going to break. At least the first fifty percent of the project. But but the the good thing is that. 
we are now working on having tools that automatically test a lot of all the contribution, but not only in unit testing, also in code style. Also, so maybe I have a contributor that is failing on code style, and you know, I'm, I'm all the time asking people that they need to uh, put the sniffers that I don't know if you have in, in your ID the Joomla sniffers. For example, here is, uh, I have a warning here saying a missing function, function dot, dot common. So that means that I haven't documented properly that function. And I need, you know, to comment that function. I still get an error because the function dot common is empty. Okay, this function does that and that. He's still not happy. I need a return tag. Whatever. A blank line here, no. Okay, so now it doesn't complain. It's really easy to set a sniffer, a code sniffer in my uh, IDE. This is going to make my developers or my team uh, better developers because it's going to require them to write good code and document it well. And I can have a tool like the, like the Jenkins that we have at that moment that it's also going to check for code style. And if I'm getting some pull from one of my teammates that it's violating the code style, I'm going to look at him, you know, in a different way. Like maybe you are adding some uh, errors, and in the company where I uh, where I was working before, they were very strict with that. And if you do a mistake, uh, they study what mistake are you doing. And if you do twice, you go to the there's kind of a corporate university. So in order to make sure that you uh, understand that you're failing on something. And if you do it again, you are fired. So that's not, maybe not, we have happier approaches to that. But this kind of tools, this kind of tools is helping to have a quality in code. And quality means less man maintenance and um, many good things. So yeah. Uh, the answer, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I cannot answer this question. Still, you you will be doing one test instead of. Yeah, every time you run the test, it's different. Yeah, but you need to run again and again and again. Is a good thing or not? I don't know. It depends on what you want to test. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, but you can have an array of a lot of the numbers and test all the numbers that you think they are. Yeah. Thank you.